So, um, thank you very much, Professor Tsagronis, for the introduction. And um, I would like to thank the Institute of World Politics for giving me the opportunity to share my research uh, and uh, the opportunity to pursue studies uh, in statecraft under the President's scholarship. Um, before we start, I would like to clarify with you the term emerging medical technologies. Uh, what I mean by emerging medical technologies are the dual usage and the dual use of medical technologies. Medical technologies have bright sides and dark sides uh, that we will look at. We will be looking at unconventional ways of using those technologies and not the typical conventional ways, uh, meaning weapons of mass destruction or biological uh, weapons programs. Um, we will have a brief look at the uh, history and historical events related to the deliberate use of disease as a weapon, as well as looking at the medical progress that we've uh, witnessed in the recent years and a few decades, and how it relates to threats. Um, who are those threatening actors? Uh, what are their intentions, and what are they? What are they capable of doing? Um, as well as, if we are vulnerable, what? What are those threats and um, how are we ca capable of managing the consequences if we were to be hit? And uh, lastly, I will provide some recommendations uh, which I estimate um, are um, necessary. So, um, since the very early days, disease has been used as a weapon. Um, in 300 BC, um, we've documented uh, Greeks and Persians and Romans who uh, use animal carcasses uh, of uh, animal infected with uh, infectious diseases to contaminate water supplies. Um, in 1346, bodies of Tartar soldiers were catapulted into the besieged uh, city of Kaffa, Crimea today, um, in order to uh, start an epidemic. In fact, the uh, Genoese people left the city uh, by boats, uh, taking the disease with them and um, spreading, uh, starting the um, plague outbreak um, in 1347. Um, in 1767, during the war between French and English forces uh, over the control of North America, the um, General Amherst wanted to provide smallpox contaminated blankets to the French Indians. He did not do it, but he had the intention. Um, in 1940, Japanese fighter planes in Manchuria were carrying um, fleas, carrying wheat grains to attract local rats with the intention again to start outbreaks. Um, shortly after World War II, there was a biological weapons race and um, culminating with the UK discontinuing its program in 1957, um, uh, followed by the US in 1973. Russia by far had its largest uh, offensive biological program. And in fact, in 1979, there was a biological Chernobyl um, where um, a um, biological warfare facility had a malfunction which resulted in the release uh, of, in the air of, um, of um, anthrax spores. Um, but what has surprised me mostly was the rate of the progress and the rate of uh, and the potential that technologies today are enabling um, those threats. Um, and this mostly has been happening thanks to what we call Moore's Law. Moore's Law says that in every 18 to 24 months, there is a doubling of computing power as well as a decrease by half of the price of com the computing processors. This means that we will have a um, exponential chart that shows that you will have devices that are more powerful but also smaller and cheaper. Uh, this has is clearly seen and has been clearly seen in the uh, telecom and um, technology sector, mostly in smartphones. We've seen a decrease in their size as well as their um, computing uh, power. Uh, they can they have cameras, uh, they have sensors, um, and this also has spilled over in the medical world, especially in the clinical field. Here, this is there is an example of pacemakers, um, talking about heart disease. Uh, pacemaker is pretty much a, a device that allows um, 
heart doctors to control the uh, heart rhythm in certain diseases. Um, and you can see since the 60s all the way to a few years ago, the evolution of uh, the size of devices and uh, their power. Some, some of them are even wireless uh, and are, can be directly programmed um, by uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth technologies. But what is even more interesting is the biology world, the impact on the bi biology world. The medical progress today lets us make the analogy that life is like computers, literally. Um, we do the analogy between cells and computers. We do the analogy between biochemical pathways and computer modules. In fact, we consider DNA as application code, which we can modify. Um, the fundamental uh, progress that had been enabled by this tech boom and this tech progress spans from drug discovery the technologies to targeted uh, cancer therapies, um, to the use of um, specific, uh, what we call today, um, uh, precision medicine and personalized medicine, where we literally target the dose of a certain medicine to the patient's DNA. So, with all this bright side of the medical progress, there is also a dark side. And this dark side um, spans from what I would resume and summarize uh, to um, the clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats, which it stands for CRISPR. Uh, if there is one thing that you have to retain from this talk is CRISPR. CRISPR is literally altering life's genome. Um, the analogy that I can make is the MS-DOS terminal uh, in the early 90s. To use a computer program, you had to know the syntax. You had to know the code in order to execute the program. CD dot dot, execute this program dot exe. But then with the release of Windows, it made life so much easier. You can drag and drop files. You can create a text file. You can drag it into a folder. You can print a text file. You can create other, uh, other files. You can um, transfer them over a disk, etc. That's exactly what CRISPR enables to do with, uh, with live organisms. You can literally drag and drop uh, DNA parts and the machine will do it for you. You only have to do it on the computer. Um, and you, what you can do is make viruses more virulent. You can make bacteria more resistant to antibiotics. Um, and you can fabricate new lives. To do so, of course, it's not that easy. You will have to have some sort of tacit knowledge. You will have to do trial and error. And that's exactly what 3D printers allow uh, some of the scientists to do. Today, 3D printers allow people to convert digital files, uh, digital 3D files, into physical objects, printed objects. Um, and they've been adapted to be able to uh, 3D print organs and human body parts. Today, we can print um, earlobes, we can print kidneys, we can print hearts. Of course, it's for research and fundamental research, but that's what it is for. Uh, today, ill-intentioned people can do trial and error in order to understand how they can create more virulent and more potent organisms. And finally, nanotechnology, which is the science of the infinitely small, uh, which allows certain um, chemical compounds to reach inside the human body uh, in a very, very easy way and making them uh, very, very potent. Um, medical de devices are getting smaller and of course they are uh, getting easier to get into. Um, back in 2008, Mr. Dick Cheney had his pacemaker deactivated because he was afraid that it could be hacked. Uh, in fact, there have been even cases where we can today hack into an insulin pump. An insulin pump is a pump that regulates your blood sugar level. Um, uh, an ill-intentioned person can, in fact, hack into the, in, the, the pump in order to have it release more, hor the, in, more insulin hormone, therefore putting a patient's life into danger. Um, one thing that also um, I've noticed in, in, in the course of this research project is also the medical propaganda. And the availability of conspiracy theories to discourage vaccination programs. Um, um, medical propaganda, medical education, medical information and its ease of access can be used by in ill-intentioned actors to uh, propagate false information. Um, 
as well as what, what I call do-it-yourself biology or, or homegrown labs, home labs. Um, today, literally, you can buy a um, biological or a biology machine that enables you to do experiment, create microbes, create microorganisms for less than $1,000 on eBay. Um, with the access of easy tutorials that you can find on certain groups. Uh, there are even groups, meetups, that get together in order to share this experiential knowledge, this tacit knowledge. There are recipes for fabricating certain uh, bacteria. And um, ill-intentioned pe persons, again, can use this ease of access uh, of equipment in order to fabricate um, uh, very potent viruses or antib antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Um, Another trend that we've noticed is the rise of evil doctors. Doctors do not respect anymore their Hippocrates oath, which says first do no harm. Um, medical knowledge now is used for homicide. Uh, doctors are joining other sites, um, either joining um, ISIS in Syria, especially where there was uh, where. Um, there was a medical training facility. Two years ago, uh, there was a significant drop of uh, medical personnel. There was a big gap. And the way um, the terrorist organization was filling the gap was by uh, offering volunteers uh, the, the, the opportunity to come and teach. Uh, and there was a terrorist f medical faculty. Um, so who are these actors and what really are they capable of? Uh, do they have the intention to really attack and, and, and really use those technologies? Well, um, especially recently, there are state-sponsored targeted assassinations, like the one that we've seen a few weeks ago. Um, uh, Kim Jong-il's uh, stepbrother uh, got assassinated uh, in Southeast Asia uh, with a very powerful uh, chemical um, uh, poison. Um, there have been reported terrorist attacks, uh, either cults or organized uh, t t terrorist organizations that have used it. The most famous one here in the United States are clearly the uh, anthrax letters uh, in October 2001 after the 9-11 attacks, but also the most recent uh, chemical attacks either in Syria and other uh, attacks in, uh, in, Af in, in Af Afghanistan. Um, and one of the most uh, dangerous um, threats that I personally have uh, found in this research was the cases of mishandlings uh, and neglect. Uh, just most recently, there was a French scientist who, was tra who works for the French uh, Institute, Pasteur, who was traveling from Seoul to Paris, and he was, um, he was carrying with him on the carry-on luggage a... Um, a, the, uh, a, a strain of the Middle East respiratory syndrome uh, virus, uh, syndrome virus, the MERS uh, virus. He passed through security. Nobody realized that he was carrying a highly potent virus in the airplane from, from Asia to Europe until he arrived to the uh, institute and realized that he had it. Um, there are other cases of, of, uh, of neglect, but, but again, the, the most um, the most dangerous uh, threat that we have uh, found in this research was state-sponsored terrorist organizations and mostly also mishandling and neglect. Um, what, is, what is about to come, um, it's, it's, it's foreseeable. Um, Kofi Annan and Bill Gates both recently have issued public warnings about how easier and lighter um, these machines are accessible online, the information, how the information can be shared. Um, but also how ISIS has been quickly adopting those technologies. Um, we've seen examples on how they've used drones in the Syrian war, how they've been used mannequins with heat generating sensors um, and automated cars, literally um, cars that uh, were as, uh, as good as the Google automated cars. Um, and um, bioterror could be the next uh, threat. Um, and w there, there were many cases of ISIS bombers who were trying to. And again, today it's not about, it's not about um, causing high casualties. It's about creating fear, chaos, panic. And that's exactly what disease does uh, to the uh, mainstream opinion. Um, so, you know, you can see examples of uh, bags full of 
animals, uh, excrements, etc. Um, and um, and those are cases, very recent cases. Um, so, how vulnerable are we? Well, it, we do have response capability and we do have consequence management. Um, the DOD, the Homeland Security, the FBI, all in, in throughout our research have done um, extensive work to um, collect intelligence. There's even, I discovered that there was a, uh, a national um, medical intelligence agency under the DIA, um, and they do um, a lot of intelligence work. Um, the emergency medical services do a lot of drills, um, and hospitals and medical personnel are trained to recognize uh, such diseases. However, one of the threats, and one of the most dangerous threats is our airports and major transportation hubs are uh, very vulnerable because if you're in North Korea and you've weaponized a certain strain, you're not going to hit South Korea because you cannot control biological weapon, it will blow back. What you can do, however, is you can go to, uh, say, Dubai airport on a Dubai-London flight and contaminate people who are in the boarding room. So, uh, and one of the last um, uh, points is neglect that can be sometimes more damaging than internet than intentional attacks. Um, so, recommendations. Um, lastly, um, it is about reshifting the focus from fear to the core of the problem, which is pub publicity and ease of access to the equipment and the information. Um, uh, uh, tackling the neglect issue by enforcing biosafety procedures and tightening control over the biolabs equipment uh, and information access. But the most important one is not to publicize. The more you talk about it, the more they want it. And I will conclude with the quote of Ayman al-Zawahiri, uh, Al-Qaeda's chief strategist under Osama bin Laden, um, saying that despite the extreme danger, they became aware of it because there was a repeated expressed concern about the threat. Thank you very much.